Jax is one of the coolest characters in the Amazing Digital Circus, which is why I will be surviving as him for the next 100 days in Minecraft. Using my incredible new abilities, I will fight off all kinds of abstracted creatures while I meet each member of the Digital Circus and turn into bigger and more powerful forms. Will I be able to save Kane from his abstraction or join him in madness? You'll have to watch until the end to find out. On day one, I spawned into the amazing Digital Circus as Jax. The ringmaster Kane had gathered me and the other circus members to show off his latest creation. The exit door is finally finished. Now we can all leave. Without any warning, the glitch spread onto Kane, causing him to abstract into a new terrifying form. This place isn't glitchy enough. He began to unleash his new dark powers, releasing powerful explosions. Abstracted spots started to appear all over the surface. Circus. Well, Pomni, it looks like we have a lot on our plate today. Pomni? Pomni? I looked over towards Pomni and realized she, along with my other friends, were running away into different parts of the circus. Oh, great. Well, this is gonna be a pain. Kane, are you still in there? No, it's not abstracted enough. You need to abstract too. Kane gathered his power and summoned an abstracted golem. The massive enemy lunged at me and I ran for my life. On day two, I was being chased through the tent by the abstracted golem. I did everything I could to lose them, but unfortunately, I was soon cornered by the horrible monster. Can you bug somebody else? I tried to fight off the enemy, but I had nothing to defend myself with other than my fists. The creature leapt into the air and stomped down with its full weight, sending shockwaves all around him. Then it spewed glitched particles at me, dealing massive damage. I was fighting a losing battle. Just as I thought I was done for, Ragatha ran into the fray and used her golden beam attacks to distract the abstracted monster. That won't hold them off for long. Come on! The two of us took cover behind something as the beast continued to look for us. Kane has lost his mind and has glitched the entire circus. I need your help to repair it. Seems like you got a pretty good plan. Good luck with that. Ugh, I can't do it myself. I don't know. You can summon golden beams of light. I think you got this handled. Suddenly, the abstracted monster smashed through our cover, breaking it to pieces. We had been discovered. Hurry, follow me. The two of us ran away as the enemy continued to rampage after us. On day three, Ragatha and I ran down the hall of rooms until finally arriving at her door. We ran inside and shut it behind us before the abstracted monster could catch up. Find something to defend ourselves. I looked around and spotted a mallet on the ground. I picked it up, but to my surprise, my body began to change form. I grew bigger in size and more powerful, giving me five more hearts and awesome combat powers. Whoa, what's this about? Just then, the monster broke down the door and stormed into the room after us. Take this! I readied my mallet and began to smash it into the enemy. It took loads of damage, and after some back and forth, he went down to my incredible new combat powers. This is why I needed your help. You're the only one who can wield that mallet and repair the circus. Suddenly, the room around us began to glitch out. Ragatha and I braced ourselves as the two of us were teleported outside of the tent. When I reappeared, I found myself in the middle of the tiger cage. Ragatha was now inside of the cage, and on top of it was none other than the abstracted cane. Oops, looks like I was only able to round up one troublemaker. Get him, my Kitties. Without warning, the tigers in the cage all partially abstracted. Before I could react, they came charging after me, forcing me to run away. On days four through five, I was being chased through the grounds by Kane's abstracted tiger goons. I booked it towards the tent and tried to take cover inside, but the abstracted felines were able to find me. That's it, no more running. I readied my weapon and began to smash the enemies one by one. They tried to fight me back with their claws, but I was able to fend them off until only one remained.
Queen. Who's the strong one now? Suddenly, the last tiger turned into a giant abstracted beast. It attacked me with a powerful lunge before raining down dangerous acid balls. I quickly realized that it was much more powerful than before. I fought back with my mallet, but the beast refused to back down. It's no use. I have to run. I ran through the tent as the tiger continued to pursue me. I soon spotted a ladder and ran up it to escape. But when I reached the top, I was cornered at a tightrope. The tiger jumped up behind me. I was trapped. I have to risk it and walk across the rope. I began to balance on the tightrope, leaving the abstracted tiger on the platform behind me. He was too big to follow. My plan was working. Ha! Some cat you are. You can't catch me now. Suddenly, the tiger unleashed a powerful roar attack. I plummeted down towards my doom. On days six through seven, I was falling down towards my certain death. But before I was able to hit the ground, the floor began to glitch out. Water appeared under me, breaking my fall and saving my life. Woo, that was lucky, and I'm not letting it go to waste. I looked around the area and noticed an electrical generator, giving me an idea. I climbed out of the water and used my my mallet to smash the electrical generator into pieces. Static spread through the water, turning the floor into an electrical trap. Hey, big guy, come and get me. The abstracted lion took the bait and jumped towards me, causing him to fall right into my trap. The beast was zapped, weakening him greatly. The two of us leapt at each other. The beast clawed at me and spewed noxious abstracted fumes. I dashed through the attack, slamming right through his defenses and dealing a critical blow. Betcha you weren't expecting that. As the beast died, it dropped a map. This could be a lead. I better check it out. With my new clue in hand, I left the area to see where the map would take me. On days eight through nine, I arrived at the location on the map to find where Ragatha was being held captive. Next to her was a massive glitch. Jax, oh, you found me. Quick, repair the glitch before Kane comes back. And how do I do that? Uh, I'm not sure. Just whack it with the mallet. I readied my weapon and smashed it into the abstracted area. But instead of destroying it, I was sucked up inside. I reappeared inside of the void to find nothing around me except for a note. What's this? I picked up the clue and read it. To return Kane back to normal, you must repair the six abstracted glitches scattered across the circus. Do this before day 100, otherwise damage will be permanent. Suddenly, Kane appeared in front of me and snatched the note out of my hands. Hey, you tried to steal my note. You will pay for that. He attacked me with his ultimate power, dealing loads of damage. I knew that I didn't stand a chance, and I looked around before spotting a strange passage through the void. I jumped into it, unsure of where it would take take me. On days 10 through 12, I found myself back inside of the tent. I had managed to escape Kane for now. That note must have been a clue. I need to find all six glitches before it's too late. Suddenly, I heard a familiar scream. Help! I ran towards the source of the yelling to find Pomni trying to fight off a swarm of gloinks. Jax, help me take on these guys. Hmm, I guess. You could at least say please. Please? I jumped into battle and began to smash the pesky gloinks with my mallet. They had us outnumbered, but I wasn't about to lose this battle. I crushed gloink after gloink with my mallet, while Pomni used her musical bard powers to back me up. Together, we managed to defeat the swarm of enemies. Thanks, Jax. Don't sweat it. But hey, I didn't know you played music. I didn't know you've been working out. Oh yeah, all the time. Uh, anyway, those gloinks have been spawning nonstop from a glitch that formed nearby. Did you say glitch? Take me there. I followed Pomni to the glitch, but when we arrived, we realized that the Gloinks had created a massive nest around it. This is getting ugly fast. I better take care of that glitch before it gets worse. Oh no, you won't. Just then, the Gloink Queen emerged from the glitch and stopped me in my tracks. Without warning, she attacked. On days 13 through 15, I was locked in combat with the Gloink Queen. She used her bite and laser eye attacks on me, and I fought back with my mallet. But she was the toughest foe I had fought so far. Uh, quick, take this. Pomni tossed over a bowling ball. I grabbed it, causing me to gain five hearts and new powers. 
years. Armed with my new bowling ball, I fought back the Gloink Queen with everything I had. It was anyone's game, and she still refused to back down. That's it, you're going back from where you came. Using my new weapon, I landed a heavy attack on the Gloink Queen, knocking her back into the glitch. No! The monster died, and the glitch vanished, destroying it once and for all. Only five more glitches remain. Suddenly, the room began to shake around us. With the glitch now gone, the nest was collapsing. Run! Pomni and I ran for our lives as the nest crumbled around us. On days 16 to 18, Pomni and I ran as the gloink nest collapsed around us. I was quick enough and narrowly escaped, but Pomni wasn't. I watched in horror as massive amounts of rubble fell onto her. Don't worry, I'll help you. I hastily dug her out, but Pomni was badly injured. Uh, you need to find something to heal me with before it's too late. Then I better get looking. I made sure to leave her in a hidden spot before I began to explore. As I searched, I came across a buffet table. Well, I was getting hungry. Don't mind if I do. I chowed down on some of the various options and saved some for Pomni to heal with. Out of the blue, Bobble popped up in front of me. No! My feast! You'll pay for this! Oh yeah? How? Like this! Bubble grew giant sized and in one chunk gobbled me up whole. On days 19 to 22, I was trapped inside of Bubble's stomach. It's like a whole new world in here. I better find a way out. I traveled through the strange dimension, passing oddity after oddity. Huh, all this stuff is from the circus. Is Bubble eating it? And that's why it's always changing? Eventually, I came across a trident lodged inside of a stone. Maybe that's the key out of here. Without another thought, I walked up to the trident and pulled it out. That was easier than I expected. Suddenly, the ground began to try tremble beneath my feet. Gift gremlins were summoned all around me. I spoke too soon. It was a trap. The gift gremlins used their rip and slashes and box fight attacks on me. And I did my best to fight back using every ability I had at my disposal. Through sheer numbers, they were beginning to overwhelm me. I needed to think of a way out of this fast. Wait a second. I'm inside of Bubble. I just need to pop him, right? I hurled the trident into the air. It traveled far until it hit something. It was the wall of Bubble's stomach. Unable to take the impact, Bubble popped. In the next instant, I reappeared in the real world, safe and sound. That settles that. I better get this food to Pomni before she expires. I hurried toward my friend. On days 23 to 26, I returned to Pomni with the food I'd gathered. Unfortunately, she was under attack by an archer golem. Dex, help! Hey, leave her alone. Why don't you pick on someone your own size? I jumped into the fight, beating the monster away from Pomni. Enraged, it used its magic arrow attacks on me. As I drew closer to the monster, it turned and shot an arrow, which erupted into a pool of poison as it impacted near me. It threw a crazy arrow bomb, which blasted arrows in every direction. It was impossible to dodge. I was a bit tired from the fight earlier, so I had a few close calls, but thankfully I had more leftover food and was able to heal up. I managed to knock them down to the ground and let loose with a bowling ball barrage, followed up by a mallet combo. Soon enough, the monster was dealt with. Not wasting another second, I delivered the rest of the food straight to Pomni. Thanks for the help, Jax. Don't sweat it. Now that you're safe, though, I should probably try and free Ragatha again. You're right. This might be useful then. The monster dropped it. Pomni tossed me a key. Another key for my collection. Thanks, kid. No time to waste. I set off for Ragatha and that pesky glitch. On days 27 to 30, I arrived back to Ragatha and the glitch I failed to remove. It looked looked as if the glitch was beginning to consume the entire cage, along with Ragatha in it. Jax, oh, you found me again. Oh, thank goodness. I don't want to still be here when that abstracted stuff reaches my cage. Don't be thankful yet. We've still got to get you out of there. As I was about to free Ragatha, an abstracted monstrosity spawned out of the glitch. Uh-oh, looks like we've got company. The abstracted monstrosity charged at me, trying to take me down with a massive fist attack. 
Nuh-uh, I don't think so. I quickly used my mallet to knock him in the gut a few times. Then I sent an array of heavy bowling balls berailing toward him. The beast was a tank, easily toughing through some of my heaviest attacks. It swung down with his fists and then hurled itself into the air, then coming down with explosive power. Despite my efforts, the abstracted monstrosity refused to back down. With another roar, the monster charged at me again. Luckily, I was able to dodge the attack, causing them to blow up some giant play blocks in the area. The dust settled, and I spotted another mallet sitting on the ground. Now's my chance. I ran for the mallet and picked it up, causing me to transform into a new, even buffer body. I gained five hearts and a giant slam attack. I was also able to launch bowling balls with explosive force now. Reinvigorated, I leapt back into battle and used my newfound powers to defeat the monster. Finally, the glitch vanished, leaving only the normal circus wall behind. Not wasting time, I freed Ragatha from her cage. I knew you were the right person to save the circus. Suddenly, abstracted Kane appeared right in front of the two of us. No, no, no! You are ruining everything! Be gone out of my sight! With a twirl of his staff, he used his powers to teleport me and Ragatha away. On days 31 to 34, I reappeared in a wooded area in the grounds. There, I encountered Gangle, trying to get her comedy mask out of a tree. I can't reach it. It's too high up. All right, enough waterworks. I'll get it. I leaped up the tree, but before I was able to retrieve the mask, the forest began to abstract around me. Suddenly, some of the trees turned into monsters. Get off of our brethren. The trees swung at me with their brambled fists, hitting me with massive punches that nearly knocked the wind out of me. I fought back using my newfound powers, creating explosions that shook everything around us. As I tried to duck and weave through their attacks, the tree monsters used their control of roots to draw me in closer to their attacks. I tore through their grasp and retaliated with my explosive bowling balls. Each of the creatures leapt and slammed at the ground, sending shockwaves through the soil that rattled my bones. Vines then shot out of the earth, attempting to spear me through. I had to evade direct attacks from them, or else I'd be plant food. Soon enough, my determination paid off. One of the trio fell. I was nearly there. As I navigated the crater created from our battle, I pummeled the remaining two with my powers. The next one died, leaving only one remaining. Take this! I used my powerful stomp attack to defeat the tree. But as it died, the comedy mask fell from the shockwaves and shattered. Oops. Oh no, without my comedy mask, I won't be able to remember where the next glitch is. But, but maybe if you find some super glue, we can fix it. I guess that means I know what I need to do next. I set off to look for super glue to fix the mask. On days 35 through 38, I was searching everywhere for the super glue I needed when I stumbled upon a bowling alley in the middle of nowhere. What the? I've never seen this place before. I wonder what's inside. I crept into the bowling alley cautiously, checking the surroundings for super glue. As I approached the counter, I saw the super glue on the wall behind it. I started to make my way behind the counter when a bowling alley employee jumped out and stopped me from grabbing the super glue. Whoa there, buddy. No crossing the counter. Sorry, I just need that super glue. Oh, this here super glue? That's the one. Oh, if you want that super glue, you've got to earn it. Get a strike, and then we'll talk. Are you serious? Ah, uh, fine. I grabbed my bowling ball and went over to the lane. All right, here goes nothing. I lined myself up and threw the ball, sending it racing down towards the pins. Looking good. Suddenly, the pins vanished right before the ball struck. It sailed through the empty space, only to have the pins reappear after rolling past. What? This is rigged. How is that even fair? Rigged? Nah. Looks like a skill issue to me. Sorry, buddy. You lost. Now you gotta pay the price. 
the bowling alley employee bolted towards me. He drew a curved sword and attacked me viciously. I wasn't about to go down without a fight though, but the employee proved to be stronger than I thought. Before I knew it, I was cornered at the edge of the bowling lane. See you later, sucker. The bowling alley employee let loose with one last flurry of slashes, knocking me down into the darkness below. On days 39 through 42, I was falling, but luckily I landed on a pile of trash, which broke my fall. Man, this place stinks. Where am I anyway? The room began to quickly light up as fire began to spread rapidly across the floor. No way, I'm in an incinerator. I started scrambling across the trash, looking for a way out, but all the walls were completely solid. This isn't good. I tried using my hammer to break through the walls, but they were too strong. I wasn't even making a dent. The fire was closing in around me. I was running out of time fast. I realized I only had one option left. Looks like the only way out is up. I grabbed as much material as I could before the fire spread to it and began building a makeshift tower, climbing my way back up out of the pile. I was building as quick as I could, but when I looked down, I saw that the fire was spreading quickly, inching closer and closer up my rickety tower of trash. Come on, I'm almost there. With one last piece, I was able to make my tower just tall enough. I jumped out of the pit right as the flames engulfed my tower completely. All right. Time to pay that bowling alley employee a visit. On days 43 through 46, I made my way back to the counter where the bowling alley employee was standing with their back to me. Boo! Ah, who the? What the? You? How did you escape? Eh, I'd give your evil plan a 4 out of 10. A 4? Why, you little... Completely enraged, the bowling alley employee swelled with fury and transformed into a monstrous new form. Die, you pest. The bowling alley employee charged, swinging at me with his tusks. They tore into me as he then bit me with his powerful jaws, dealing a lot of damage. I slammed him over the head with my mallet, knocking him away from me. Then I grabbed hold of my bowling bowling ball and began exploding him. He shook the brunt of the attack off. They shot a collection of fangs that snapped at me as they sprouted from the floor. Despite retaliating with my strongest attacks, nothing I did was able to take him down. Your pathetic powers will hurt me. It would take something much more powerful. He was right. Glancing around the bowling alley, I noticed that the fire from the incinerator had spread to the bowling lane. I lined myself up with the flames on the bowling lane and waited for my chance. Soon, the employee came charging at me and I dodged out of the way at the last second, turning around and blasting him with my explosive bowling balls, knocking him into the flames. Oh, how did you trick me? Looks like a skill issue to me. With the bowling alley employee taken care of, I was free to claim the super glue I needed to get for Gangle. All right, time to go repair that mask. On days 47 through 50, I returned to Gangle, giving her the super glue she needed to fix her mask. This is perfect. Thank you. She quickly repaired and donned her comedy mask. Oh, that's right. I remember where the glitch is now. Come on, oh, follow me. I followed Gangle to another location where we found the next glitch waiting. All right, time to take this sucker down. I stepped forward, ready to put an end to it. But then out of nowhere, the world began to glitch out around me. What the? The ground began to transform into a dangerous obstacle course surrounded by lava. Oh, come on. This whole place is rigged. Oh, well, that's just great. I guess I'll need to platform my way over to that abstraction. I began jumping from platform to platform, carefully making my way across. Easy does it now. Gotta be careful. I was making good progress until the ground began shaking unexpectedly. Now what? As the shaking intensified, a giant lava monster rose out of the pool of lava around the platforms. You're not getting any farther than that. Without warning, it attacked me. On days 51 through 54, I was under attack by the powerful lava monster. He used a powerful boulder toss attack at me, which I barely managed to dodge by jumping off the platform before it was destroyed. Watch it, what's the big idea? That glitch is the source of my power. You nor anyone else shall touch it. 
Right as he finished speaking, he attacked again by sending a lava wave at me. The wave launched me into the air, but luckily I managed to land on another platform. I jumped around dodging more attacks before sending explosive bowling balls back at the monster. Is that all you're capable of, weakling? <laughs> Man, this guy is too tough. I need to destroy that glitch before he gets the best of me. I watched carefully, evading the lava monster's attacks as I made my way across the platforms and closer to the abstraction. Remain still and let me crush you like the bug you are. As the lava monster made another powerful attack, I dodged out of the way and managed to seal the glitch once and for all. No, my power! I suddenly gained five more hearts and new powers. Feeling the energy ripple through me, I turned my attention to the lava monster. Unleashing my new ice powers, I was able to easily destroy the weakened beast. No! As the monster died, the world around me began to turn back to normal. Taking in my surroundings, I saw a letter on the floor. I ran over and picked it up. If you're reading this, please help me. I'm hiding in the arcade. Signed, Zubal. Huh, looks like Zubal is stuck in this whole mess too. I better go help them. Without wasting another second, I took off making my way back to the tent. On days 55 to 58, I arrived at the arcade to find Zubal hiding like a little baby. Ugh, finally, you found my note. Never thought I'd be happy to see you. Believe me, I wish somebody else had found it. We better get out of here though. Suddenly, the room began to abstract. We both braced ourselves until the glitching finally stopped. You okay, Zubal? Oh my gosh. I realized Zubal lost all their body parts and all that was left was a head. Oh no, this is awful. Help me find my body. Uh, do we have to? I don't really have the time. Seriously? Come on, lend me a hand. <laughs> I see what you did there. All right, let's look around. The two of us quickly scrambled through the arcade, looking for body parts. However, as I was searching, one of the arcade cabinets sucked Zubal and I inside. Ah! Suddenly, we reappeared inside some kind of game world. Are we inside of a video game? Weird. Suddenly, Creeper Knights came out and attacked me. On days 59 to 62, I fought off the low-level enemies without the help of Zubal. The knights swung at me with their fists and spawned many knights that exploded into pixel-sized bits. Then I leapt into the sky and stomped tons of them flat at once. With my overpowering strength, I was able to take every last one of them down. I think we need to beat this game in order to escape. Let's try to find out the main goal. I guess it's worth a shot. To get Together, we traveled through the game world until a villager came running towards us. Mighty heroes, our village is under attack and we need your help. Huh, well, isn't this convenient? This sounds like a main mission. Take us there. I followed the villager to their home where I saw an abstracted dragon terrorizing everything in its wake. All right, Zubal, it's time to slay a dragon. I charged into battle without a second thought. On days 63 to 66, I was fighting the abstracted dragon dragon one-on-one. -on -one. They used their laser breath on me, dealing tons of damage. I struck at him with my mallet attacks. When it roared, horrific masses of withering tentacles burst from the ground, draining my health and holding me in place for the dragon to pummel me. It then hurled another beam at me, exploding me and my surroundings for massive damage. This guy is no joke. What should I do? I'll distract them so you can get a clean hit. Sounds like a horrible idea. But okay, let's do it. Zubal hopped ahead into the village and got the dragon's attention while the beast was chasing them, soaring through the air over the rooftops. I hopped up on top of a tower and readied up a powerful attack. Come I landed a concentrated ice beam on the dragon, freezing through its scales and killing it once and for all. Yep, all me. You saved my village. Thank you, please. Take this. The villager handed me a magic wand, causing me to gain five hearts and new powers. The Dark King is just north of here. Defeat him and save the entire kingdom. I'll stay behind and help them rebuild. Hurry and beat this game. Rebuild with no hands? Um, okay, you got this. With that, I kept on moving along. On days 67 to 70, I arrived at the chambers of the Dark King, where he stood waiting for me. You 
must be the mighty hero that has come to stop my conquest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have time for this. Let me just kick your butt so I can get out of here. Why, you little... I charged the boss and used my hammer smash attack on him, but he endured it. Within a split second, he slashed me with his scythe. Blow after blow, it dealt tons of damage. The Dark King grew more upset, drawing even more power from within and allowing him to levitate and move faster. He wailed at me with immense force and I could barely keep up with him. So I used my jewel mallets to return the pain. Finally, I had the Dark King right where I wanted him. I launched one more powerful attack and ended him with my new power. I managed to defeat him, winning the game with ease. Suddenly, Zubal and I were zapped back into the arcade. Zubal now had their body back. Wow, that actually worked. Thanks, Jax. Before I was able to celebrate, Abstracted Kane appeared before the two of us. On days 71 to 74, I was confronted by Abstracted Kane. I finally found you again. You've been ruining all of my glitchy masterpieces. Come on, Kane. I know the real you is in there somewhere. This is the real me, and I'm going to make you two see that. He attacked Zubal with a powerful abstraction bomb, but I quickly jumped in front of them to block the hit. In an instant, I was teleported into a dungeon. Nothing but darkness surrounded me. What is this place? I need to get out of here. I started walking forward when out of nowhere, abstracted versions of myself began to gather all around me. I was surrounded. Join us. No, out of my way. Become one with the glitch. I used my mighty stomp to push the horde back as they swarmed around me. They were as strong as I was, but luckily they lacked my powers. I fought my way through them, but their numbers were endless. I finally managed to spot a door and hurried towards it. On day 75 to 78, I walked through the door and shut it only to find myself in a strange room. Inside of it was the next glitch waiting for me. I better destroy this thing and get out of here. I began walking towards the abstraction, but the door to the dungeon burst open behind me. The room flooded with abstracted beings, and they all combined to transform into a giant abstracted monster. Why can't I just catch a break? It called down a swarm of stars that began to fall, exploding all around me. I used my punch attacks to keep him busy as I evaded the attacks. Once I had some range, I launched a barrage of bowling balls at him. He shot more abstraction bowling at me, and I retaliated, summoning a storm of sharp ice shards that rained down above him. He kept up a steady volley of shadow balls, which I barely managed to dodge. I attacked back with my chain whips. I'm gonna turn you to muck. It was anyone's game, but I wasn't about to let them win. I used my mighty mallet slam attack to overpower them, finally taking them down. Time to finish what I came here to do. I sealed the glitch, and I was teleported back back inside of the tent. Only two more glitches to go. Just then, Kinger ran up to me in a frenzy. Jax, I have a lead on the next glitch. Come with me. For the days of 79 through 82, Kinger had led me to my next abstraction to go up against. Oh, looky here. One more found. Thanks, Kinger. I think I got it from here. Okay, good. Kinger then ran away as fast as he could. I mean, you could have continued helping. Ah, oh, whatever. I'll do it myself. I then walked up to the glitch to seal it, when out of nowhere, a group of illagers ran around me, trying to make sure I wouldn't seal the abstraction up. Stop right there. Get away from our glitch. Come on, guys. Just leave me alone with the glitchy thing, and no one has to get hurt. Oh, but we can't. And if anyone's gonna get hurt, it's you. Look, we don't have to play this game. All I need to do is destroy this thing. Then I'll be out of your way. This glitch is our god. You will never destroy it. Get him, men. All of the illagers started to attack me at once with their swords, magic, and bows. You were right about me getting hurt, but I'm gonna hurt you more. I tried to keep fighting, using my powers to get rid of a few of them and my explosive bowling ball to try and strike them down, but it just wasn't working. The army would continue to grow as we were battling. I can't keep up much longer. 
Keep attacking, man! I was becoming overwhelmed by the Illager army. I couldn't take it anymore, and I passed out. On days 83 to 86, I woke up in a cage with Kinger, and standing in front of me was the Illager leader. You nasty intruders will soon die by my hand. Wait, I'm also royalty, and by royal law, I challenge you to a king off. What's that? Sounds stupid. Watch your tongue, rabbit. It is the most sacred of challenges amongst leaders. I accept. Suddenly, the floor opened up from under my feet, and we were both dropped into an arena. Standing below the Illager King in front of me was a powerful knight. Uh, can someone tell me what this challenge is? The king's knights have a fight to the death, and the winner becomes the new king. I don't have a knight, so you'll just have to do. Good luck. In an instant, Kinger ran away. How do I keep getting in these kind of situations? Just then, the knight lunged at me. On days 87 to 90, I was locked in an epic battle between the Illager's knight. He used an enormous slam attack on me and tried to overwhelm me. It shook the ground as it landed. This guy's power levels were insane. I fought back with my dragon spear attack, then followed up with some explosive bowling balls. But thanks to his heavy armor, he was able able to endure all my strikes. He zeroed in on me, swinging wildly and slamming the earth once again. Dirt rose and fell like waves on the ocean, sending me off balance and making it easier to hit me. For the king! He used his deadly axe attack on me, leaving me with low health. Luckily, I was able to heal up with some food. I quickly resumed fighting though, as the knight continued to strike at me relentlessly. This isn't good. I need to break through his armor. I used my mallet strike attacks to wear him down. And finally, when he was vulnerable with his axe stuck in the ground, I went in for the kill. Ah! I landed the finishing blow, winning the match in Kinger's name. I also gained five more hearts and new lightning powers. Looks like I'm the new king of the Illager, and my first decree is to destroy the glitch. I left the area to finish what I had started. On days 91 to 93, I arrived at the glitch and stepped toward it to seal it up. But suddenly, an abstracted Ravager emerged from it to stop me. Prepare to die. Not this again. The monster used its massive size to jump into the air, coming down with enough force to almost smash me flat. The ground quaked with its fury as it roared and charged me again, attempting to gore me with its tusks. I summoned my lightning powers. They rained down on the monster, but it shrugged it off. That won't stop me! Take this! I was determined to stop this glitched creature. I began to add other attacks onto my lightning. I threw bowling balls, snapping chains at him, and bashed him over the head with my twin mallets. I watched as he tried to charge at me again, but I dodged and he slammed into the tower wall. You just messed up big time. I landed the finishing blow, and as it died, the glitch sealed. Suddenly, the ground trembled and abstracted Kane appeared before me. No! My beautiful glitches! You monster! He began attacking me when out of nowhere, I heard a voice calling out to me. Jax, over here! Just like that, I escaped with Ragatha. On days 94 through 96, I followed Ragatha to a hiding spot near the tent where all my friends were waiting for me. You actually did it! There's only one glitch left to seal! Yeah, we're so close. Do you guys have any idea where I might be? I think I do. Here. Zubal handed me a map titled Kane's Fortress. While you were on your little quest with Kinger, I managed to find out where Kane's been hiding. Jotted down the location on that map. Bet the final glitch is inside there. Nice. I was always curious where he has been hiding this entire time. Take this to help you. Gangle handed me a potion of strength to help with the upcoming mission. Thanks, everyone. It's time to finally get this quest over with. Then we can all relax. Ready to take on anything? I departed and made my way towards the final quest. On days 97 through 98, I had followed the map closely and found myself outside of the giant chessboard. The chessboard? Nobody ever comes here anymore. Is this the right place? I took a closer look and it was absolutely packed with guards on the inside. That's a lot of security. Looks like I'll have to sneak my way past it if I want to reach Kane in one piece. 
I began to make my way through the hideout, moving from cover to cover, avoiding the guards as I stealthed closer and closer. My progress was halted when I found myself stuck in front of a guard who wasn't moving at all and no other cover in sight. Oh great, I need to get past him somehow. I looked around for a solution and spotted a table with a glass bottle on it. Yeah, that gives me an idea. I took careful aim and rolled my bowling ball into the shelf, causing the glass bottle to fall off and shatter, creating the perfect distraction. Hart, who goes there? Show yourself! I watched as the guard wandered off from his post to investigate and then made my move to continue forward. I finally made it to another room, but to my surprise, it was completely empty. What the? Now, get him! A bunch of guards came swarming into the room. They had set a trap and I fell right into it. On day 99, I was under attack by a group of Kane's guards. I leapt in with my powerful mallet. I smashed my weapons against the mass of abstracted bodies and many of the glitches fell, unable to withstand my might. The glitches clustered up in a way that became easy to hit with my lightning and chain attacks. I kept fighting on, determined to make my way through every last guard if I had to, when I heard a voice suddenly call out to me. Stop! Leave him alone! I turned around to watch as my friends came charging in and began fighting off the endless guards for me. We've got this. You go ahead and see that final glitch. You guys aren't too bad. Thanks! With my friends to back me up, I was able to break away from the fight and started making my way deeper into the hideout, determined to destroy the final glitch. On day 100, I arrived in the final room, where the abstracted Kane was waiting, guarding the final glitch. All right, Kane, it's over. And over the glitch. Never! It's the last and only one of my beautiful glitches remaining. Your mindless destruction ends here. Kane attacked me with a combination of magic and abstracted power. He shot me with dart-like magic arrows that threatened to run me through. I dodged the brunt of the attack, but then he began to pelt me with blobs of pure abstracted energy. As he flew closer to the ground, I summoned my chain whip to lash at him. Seeing another opportunity to strike, I shot out my lightning sending electricity coursing through his body. It'll take more than that to stop me, Kane. Angered, Kane entered the next phase to his attack. With a swipe of his sight, he shot enormous spears of darkness. With another swipe, he leveled hordes of violet shadows. It was like dodgeball as I ducked and weaved, doing my best to dodge while still hitting back with my mallets. Intent to put a stop to my nimbleness, Kane called forth masses of glitched tentacles that latched onto me, holding me in place while he pummeled me. Not about to let this slide, I retaliated with my own attack. I'm just getting started! Take this! Kane blasted me with his ultimate black void attack, causing significant damage and leaving me on the ropes. No! I didn't come this far to fail now. I'm not giving up yet. As soon as I chugged the potion of strength I had been given, I unleashed all my powers at once to overwhelm Kane until I finally had an opening. I charged toward the final glitch, sealing it, which caused Kane to return back to normal. I was victorious. The circus had been saved. Yes, Jim!